patient is a 45 year old male painter by occupation uh, presented with complaints of loss of muscle mass tiredness fatigability and loss of libido of uh, 5 years duration yes mm. sir uh, loss of muscle mass can be atrophy of the muscles okay uh, with uh, loss of libido because of lack can of nutrition because of uh, lack of nutrition or any chronic illnesses malabsorption syndromes or uh, any malignant lesions mal uh, any underlying mm. malignancy but 5 years duration is unlikely dry right. still tuberculosis mm. uh, then yes. loss loss of libido indicates uh, uh, autonomic dysfunction oh, good okay mm. tiredness yeah. tiredness fatigue uh, fatigability tiredness mm, can be due to again malnutrition or uh, malabsorption you know or any, any cardiac any cardio cardiac or neurological complications anything, anything so. what neurological disease can produce fatigability fatigability one is myasthenia Okay, in cardiac disease, can you tell a valvular lesion which presents Val with fatigue? Uh, valvular lesion, um, mitral regurgitation presents with uh, mitosnosis. Mitosnosis. Uh, no, mitosnosis, sorry. Uh, mitos so, the possibilities you have mentioned here are? Uh, one is any chronic malnutrition or Good. any chronic illness. Yes. Uh, then tuberculosis, any Good. element lesion with right. the involvement of autonomic uh, dysfunctions. Okay. Uh, cardiac side, mitosinosis. Fine. Let's move forward. Or myasthenia, fatigability on this one. On examination. On examination. Oh. Patient is uh, uh, pallor present. Uh, dry, uh, less, less. Lusterless. Lusterless. Okay. Lusterless. Lusterless skin. Lusterless skin. Uh, wrinkles present. Alabaster skin present. Alabaster skin means uh, milky white, silk like, shining skin. That's what it means. Okay, sir. Alabaster. Oh. Alabaster oh. skin. Oh, white. So, uh, pulse rate is 80 per minute. Uh, blood pressure is 90 over 60. Then, on standing, it is 80 bar 40. Then, facial and axillary hairs absent. No gynecomastia. Test is uh, 2 into 2 centimeter. Okay, sir. Volume, uh, volume, so of the volume, volume of the testis is 2 into 2. So, sir, pale, dry skin uh, uh, with wrinkles present. Alabaster skin that is uh, seen with uh, hypothyroidism, hypopituitarism, all those things. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that kind of skin. But with the pale skin, shiny skin, then pulse shiny rate is shiny 80. skin in hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism what is change in hypothyroidism? What type of skin you get? Uh, hypothyroidism, there will be pallor will be there, plus yellowish tinge will be there. Yellowish tinge will be there for the skin. What may be the reason for yellowish tinge? Hyperkeratinemia. Hyperkeratinemia, very good. Very Hyperkeratinemia. Good. Hyperkeratinemia. Then, Shiny skin in a hypothyroidism or is it dry scaly skin? Dry scaly skin. Dry scaly oh, skin. So no, it is not skin. like that here. Okay. Okay. Then okay sir. Carry on. Then, then blood pressure 90 by 60. Uh, on, on standing it is 80 by 40. So there is a postural hypotension. Can you tell a few causes for postural hypotension? Uh, sir, postural hypotension. Any autonomic disturbances, uh, neurological symptoms like Parkinson's disease later stage it can produce. Any yes. Parkinson's plus symptoms like uh, yes. M MSA, multisome atrophy, okay. uh, autonomic variant, then uh, uh, myasthenia, gillen um, Myasthenia, how do you get uh, BP fall on standing? Myasthenia, there are autonomic dysfunctions association. Is there a Myasthenia. Rare, rare though, no? Okay, okay sir. Uh, then diabetic autonomic neuropathy. Very common, yes. Very common. Uh, then... Uh, since uh, you have gone any to sensory motor uh, neuropathies which involves autonomic like uh, so uh, thought but merry tooth all those things can produce no no autonomic no no, 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 no. common neuropathies where you get uh, 
autonomic nervous system disturbances or one is diabetes other types diabetes, other neuropathies uh, with uh, hypertension tend uh, other neuropathies other neuropathies uh, amyloidosis when the good amyloidosis any amyloidosis. other porphyria Por ah, porphyria yes, okay, sir. more common than this is guillain barre syndrome ah, okay sir so there are four things you must remember with the neuropathy and uh, orthostatic hypertension okay carry on mm. then uh, facial and axillary hair absent uh, that shows with the testicular volume is less so secondary sexual characters is uh, absent reduced so, secondary sexual characters are getting affected no gynecomastia no. Yes. So, so where are you then? So now gynecomastia means it is not related to any um, uh, uh, liver, chronic liver disease or anything like that that produces. And mm. not, uh, and there is no hyper estrogenemia like of uh, presentation. Also. No. So there okay. is a, so there is a autonomic is involved. Uh, then, if the patient has got loss of volume, like hemorrhage, you can again get a loss of uh, BP fall. Loss. Uh, loss. Oh, okay. Again, in such scenario, you must ask to drugs. What drugs the patient taking, which can produce orthostatic BP fall? Uh, beta blockers. So, so th that also must be thought of as possible. Thought of uh, drug when you. But it only from the angle of orthostatic hypotension. Potential. Okay, sir. But you get combinations like neuropathy causes will be entirely different. And, uh, Are you okay? Okay, sir. So where do you go from here? Uh, sir. Sir, any okay. Neurology. Let's move forward. Um, okay, let's move forward. You think of okay. some neurology condition. So past history, past history, your past history, this is a past history. Hist okay, sir. Uh, history of snake bite 10 years back and uh, undergone hemodialysis 10 times, blood transfusion 7 times and uh, he was in shock at that time of admission. Okay, so, okay, sir, pituitary so, involvement might have happened at that time. So you think it's a pituitary? Pituitary involvement. So 10 years, ba 10 years back, now it is only 5 years since he has got complaints. Uh, sir, do you think, still you think it is pituitary? Uh, yes, sir. Pan hyperpituitarism. Maybe he might have noticed it in the later stages. So tell me, what are symptoms uh, and signs of snake bite and venomation? Um, snake bite, uh, sir, two types mainly uh, neurotoxic and uh, hemotoxic. Neurotoxic uh, uh, cobra and crate. So mainly tosis of thalmoplegia that is diplopia will be there then uh, muscle paralysis artificial muscle paralysis uh, tongue paralysis respiratory muscle paralysis and uh, hypoxia uh, then neck holding everything all uh, muscles will get paralyzed paralyzed okay then paralyzed then um, hemotoxic mainly the bleeding manifestations and uh, in cobra and crate cobra more of local reactions will be there crate less local reactions no no like, no, so, no 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 uh, cobra no local reaction at all okay sir cobra okay. no local reaction at all oh. the crate has combination of local reaction plus neurotoxin oh, okay, sir. so cobra no local reaction okay any okay. other uh, then um, uh, viper, local signs. What local are local signs? Uh, viper, it is uh, edema, edema, uh, uh, edema, induration, erythema, uh, then compartment syndrome like presentation. Yes, anything else locally? There will be oozing, blisters, blisters, gangrene, even gangrene. Uh, that's later on, but later. Bleeding, blisters going up, up to the groin, the lower limb bite. Okay, and edema progressively increasing in severity. Okay, and what are the features of edema in this case? If you get rat bite, will you get edema? Yes. Insect bite, will you get edema? 
so what will be the difference between the stadium and the edema of snake bite? Cellulitis can be edema. edema will be local. Uh, edema will be very lo local areas in the ins other insect bite and all. It will spread to this vasogenic. Envenomation edema appears within 20 minutes. Oh, if you have insect bite, cellulitis and other reactions come later on. So oh. time onset of edema is important for us. Okay, sir. Stop words. Uh. That's very important. And okay. very severe pain can be a sign of local envenomation. Although uh. there are no local reactions. This okay. is classical for cobra. No local reaction but severe unbearable pain. Okay, sir. What are systemic features? Uh, bleeding manifestations. Then okay. acute, acute, no, kidney injury, acute kidney injury can be there. Kidney injury, yes. Any other? Uh, Somebody comes with a bite. What are the important points by which you can say it is a possibly a toxic bite or it is not, it is not poison, non poisonous, it is a poisonous bite. So, what will be the important points to say it is a poisonous bite? Um, we'll see for uh, uh, dropping of eyelid, tosses. That's all. That's all. Neurological signs. Uh, local react. Local. What all things you'll see? Local bite marks. Bite marks may be there. Yes. Bite mark may be because of the non-poisonous bite. Uh, but that uh, the fang marks is important. The uh, non-poisonous snake. The bite. The all teeth will be involved. The teeth. Other all depends teeth upon the. It so all depends upon the. What else? What shall I say? The position of the teeth. Whether the teeth okay. is shed or not, broken okay. or not, okay. anything else. Uh, Suppose the patient faints, what do you uh, make out of that? Patient faints, patient the faints. Uh, uh, hypotension is there, then it is an uh, envenomation sign. So. No, okay. fainting is usually because of fright, anxiety. Uh, that is uh, not taken as a sign of envenomation. Okay, sir. Suppose the patient vomits, what do you think it is? Vomiting is a sign of envenomation. Okay, sir. BP fall is a sign of envenomation. Mm. Severe pain, even if there is no local reaction, is a sign of envenomation. Mm. So, important point is the blood pressure loss, lowering of blood pressure, fainting, vomiting. Okay, sir. Systemic which you already mentioned. And some of the systemic features you said as renal failure and all, not mm. abruptly. After a few hours or days. Oh, mm, sir, sir. So, what's the first aid you'll give to these patients? Uh, first aids from the bite side or? Yes, from bite side. Bite side, I actually do not uh, disturb the wound. Just yes. keep the. Uh, and uh, now, now it is the tonic application of tonic is also not advised. So, don't take an incision. Don't make an incision. Don't make don't any incision. Uh, don't suck as was uh, advised before. Uh, uh, incision, drainage or surgeries. And immediately shift to a hospital uh, with uh, and uh, make the patient more rust in a resting position. How that do you do that? The affected uh, limb should be below the heart level. Uh, and you must splint. Splint. Uh, and put a tight bandage. Whole limb must be bandaged. Bandaged. Okay. Should not move. Angle should not move. Elbow should not move. Immobilize and take the patient to hospital. Okay. Okay. Mm. Then, what next? So you don't do okay. incision. You don't. So do certain things are not to be done. Not to be done. Okay. Yeah. Then in hospital, hospital, look for signs of envenomation. What do you do after coming to the hospital? What do you do? What all things to look for? Uh, looking for the signs of envenomation. Yes, like that you already mentioned. Uh, then, what will you do? Then, uh, arrange for uh, uh, you if signs of envenomation is. You put a measuring tape and measure the circumferential measurement okay. of the greatest site of swelling. And okay. keep on taking it frequently. If it's increasing, uh -huh. that it's a fast spreading swelling sign of envenomation. Okay. The signal for oozing. From any site, puncture wound or local bite reaction, palpate for the lymph nodes. Swelling may be there in a cellulitis already mentioned. 
lymph node do not appear the moment you get injury in any patient hmm. unless it is a inflammation so rapidly appearing lymph node is again important point okay sir and the, the signs and spe- symptoms are not specific they are specific to species of the snake and not common for all species snakes oh. together you cannot say how does okay. it produce local reaction the protease enzymes in the venom enzymes are there toxins are there what is the local reaction because of tissue destruction what is mm. dry bite all poisonous snakes are all poisonous snake bites are not uh, uh, maybe having that envenomation because the sometimes they are uh, they bite without injecting the venom from the venom sac that kind of how it happens like that why it happens like that because uh, a repeat bite and all because sh- maybe the teeth is partly broken Pro- uh. to when the patient uh, is bitten by the snake the tip of the snake well, of the teeth does not have the orifice oh. the venom is coming few millimeters or centimeter above the tip so that much that the have so if they are biting over a cloth okay. then it's not adequate depth in the skin okay. okay you understand what i'm saying okay sir okay okay so in which case also you may not get and what's the shape of these bite marks bite marks is a pinpoint bite marks in case of crate yes and uh, at like a linear aberration mark in case of small linear aberration mark in case of uh, cobra and uh, uh, more deep lacerated one is in uh, viper bite and also if you move the limb when it by during bite it may become a linear mark oh, okay sir that's also possible okay so the recognition of uh, systemic features and local reaction will tell you what are the problems so what are the cns problems you already mentioned paralysis mm. what all things happen to the muscle muscle paralysis and rhabdomyolysis also can happen rhabdomyolysis what happens to blood blood uh, also hemolysis can happen okay then what shock how is the shock occurring mechanism of shock cardiogenic later on cardiogenic cardiogenic, cardiogenic. 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 and how do they get re- renal failure is another one renal what's the mechanism for is... each what's the mechanism for each uh, sir bp, uh, BP. Uh, let us uh, go to bp first low okay. blood pressure what's the mechanism cardiogenic shock myocardial depression he, he said there are a lot of enzymes uh, toxins okay. some okay. of them are vasodilators uh, some are directly acting myocardial toxins toxins and Then, there may be hypovolemia like basically bleeding to the third uh, okay sir okay, so multifactorial you can say uh, blood pressure okay, is it directly acting venom on the heart then difficult to revive the patient okay then of mm. course we have our what plus compartmental syndrome uh. how do you recognize compartment syndrome uh, the pain increase pain and pulselessness uh, so pain on passive stress of the foot pain not control the opioid that means very severe pain neurological manifestation a paresthesia paresthesia decrease sensation and muscle become weak and when you palpate the compartment will be very tense woody feeling okay and pallor and pulseless pulselessness because it compromises the nerve and arteries and ideally pressure. you must take it compartmental pressure 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 it measures direct compartmental pressure so this how you recognize and how do you treat it fasciotomy emergency fasciotomy is it sure. now come to the renal failure It's it's a a mechanism. Uh, one yes. is uh, acute kidney injury secondary to reduced perfusion. Another one is mm. uh, rhabdomyolysis and my, my pigment nephropathy. Rhabdomyolysis and uh, myoglobin related pigment yes. nephropathy. Mm. Then uh, as a part of uh, uh, DIC, as a part okay. of uh, vasculitis involvement, uh, mm. direct injury too. Mm. 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 so 
the mechanism of renal injury, the VNMA produces an immunological response. Mm -hmm. The immunological response may be producing injury to the kidney directly. Mm -hmm. VNMA have direct injury also, other okay. than through immune response. Mm -hmm. Then, VNMA can release cytokine mediators, addition okay. molecules, which can produce interstitial nephritis. Mm -hmm. It can also produce glomerular nephritis. And the cytokines can reduce the renal blood flow, which in turn produces renal tubular necrosis. Oh. And if it is uh, delayed, cortical necrosis also. Okay. Some of these uh, toxins may produce hemolysis. Mm -hmm. So you get uh, hemolysis induced renal injury. Mm -hmm. Some of them produce rhabdomyolysis. So you get myoglobin induced injury. Mm -hmm. And this may block some of the small, small blood vessels. Or mm -hmm. patient may bleeding produce hypotension. Or there may be direct vasculitis, as you already mentioned. Mm -hmm. So these are the features of renal failure. The mechanism of renal failure. Shock, you already said. Bleeding. And sometimes there may be some other chemicals like histamines, serotonins. Both of them can produce vasodilatation. Okay. And sometimes there may be ACE inhibitor like substances also being released mm. and neurotoxicity tell about that uh, neurotoxicity is mainly two types of neurotoxicity in, uh, that is cooperate is mainly post uh, post synaptic uh, blockage of the ACH and uh, create this pre synaptic blockage but both produces uh, both produces uh, 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 the descending kind of paralysis that is starting from the eyes, uh, tosses, okay. diplopia, then jaw muscle paralysis, tongue paralysis, followed by respiratory paralysis and trunk muscle paralysis like that. So they can produce presynaptic, postsynaptic, synaptic. or combination of combination of both, both together. What is the difference between presynaptic and postsynaptic? Mm, sir, it is uh, with. Uh, uh, Pyridostic means we can reverse the uh, post-synaptic one. We can't do it with uh, the pre-synaptic one. That, ACH correct. is not at all released. So, so pre-synaptic is not reversible with antivenin. Uh, and it takes weeks or months for recovery. Okay. Post-synaptic target is a stakeholder receptor so, and recovers with the antivenin and anticholinesterase. That's very good. So, two types of Neurotoxic. Neurotoxic. The features you already mentioned, dosis, ophthalmoplegia, poor facial tone, limited mouth opening, you said tongue falling out, drooling, limbs are weak, flaccid, airflexic, they cannot mm -hmm. walk, but it mimics other other diseases which can, can have LGB like picture. Oh. LGB commonly starts from the bottom for the feet and goes up, oh. here it may not be so. Botulism can be mimicker and some other poisons can be there. How does it produce effect on the blood basically? Uh, mainly hemolysis and co coagula anticoagulants. Ah, and coagulants are there. Poor coagulants are there. Anticoagulants are there. Fibronolytics are there. And there are platelet activators and anti activators. And where do they bleed usually? Gum bleeding and. Uh, Gum bleeding. Where else it can bleed? Then uh, puncture sites. Puncture hair, sites. Hair for puncture sites. Hair follicles. Ah, it can bleed into the GI tract. GI tract. Okay, sir. And it can bleed into the brain. Oh. Intracranial bleed is also possible. That can be pretty bad. Okay. So it can be anywhere. Bleed. There's no some some specific areas. Mm. So, and the natural history of the bleed is variable. When does it stop? When does it stop? We do not know. People differ. Okay. So species of snakes also. Okay. Hemostasis related toxins are there. Basically they deal with the clotting mechanism. They interfere with the normal clotting. Okay. So manifestation can be the form bleed, DIC, hemorrhage. Commonly they are all reversed with antivenin or it may be sometimes delayed. What about myotoxic? Rhabdomyolysis. Muscle. Rhabdomyolysis, yes. So, how it happens? Like that. 
It can be locally, systemically, rhabdomyolysis and renal failure. Atim, atim. Now, will you clinically diagnose, uh, lab wise, how do you diagnose rhabdomyolysis? Sir, creatine phosphokinase will be very much elevated. That's one. And then, um, again, uh, this uh, urine, myoglobinuria will be there. Red when carotene. you examine urine, dipstick technique, dipstick technique. you will find there is blood. Blood. But RBC will be absent. RBC will be absent. RBC will be absent. That's one glue for you. Mm. One glue for you. Okay. Uh. So, rhabdomyolysis. What other situation where you get rhabdomyolysis? Mm, sir, uh, any trauma, any polytrauma, road traffic, polytrauma, heavy exertion, exercises. Like what? Like what? Like, uh, sir, in our part, it is that China Pradeshan Temple, that China one Pradesh is one Pradesh common yes. thing. Then Pradesh. exertion to mountain climbing, all those. And people who are trained to get a, a, a entry into the police or military, they uh, heavy exercises. exercising. Heavy exercises. Uh. On runners, for first time somebody is running, they get new trouble. Mm -hmm. There are drugs which can reduce uh, rhabdomyolysis, toxins, and snake bite, of course, is one. So, what are the investigators in a big white and animation? Mm, sir, uh, the clotting time, first thing. That's good. Okay. Uh, clotting, clotting time. time. Uh, initially, three hours we have to do every hourly, mm. if it is normal. Then mm. we have to repeat it uh, six hourly okay basis. then then a routine investigations like was complete blood count total count blood differential count uh, hemoglobin then a renal function test urine complete examination to look for any RB, um, hematuria or uh, hemoglobinuria myoglobinuria and protein loss then, uh, depending upon uh, this, uh, then the complications then other expected. complications expected. We will do for like suspected abnormalities. CPK we can do. Then, DIC, DIC, we can do the um, uh, coagulation workup, the IN workup, IN prehab. Prothrombi time, IN, uh, in the INR, then uh, peripheral smear may be peripheral helpful. Peripheral smear. Platelet count may be helpful. Fibrin joint may be reduced. Fibrin may be High. All times may be elevated. Breeding time, clotting time, APT, hmm. DPT, everything may be prolonged. prolonged. So, what is the difference between crate and cobra bite? Uh, both neurotoxic and the one is reversible with. Uh, uh, Acetylcholine esterase inhibitors, Cobra. The crate is not. So, oh, so crate is and having bengalotoxin. It acts presynaptically, pre so obviously it doesn't act with the uh, uh, neostigmine. Uh, but calcium gluconide may be helpful yeah. sometimes. Okay. okay. So, treatment of snake bite. Snake bite. Uh, anti snake venom. Yes, anti venin. Uh. Uh, how do you give it? Uh, we usually give 10 vials. Route of administration? Uh, IV, slow, initial 15 minutes you have to give slow IV. Then if no reactions, then we can administer the rest within the next 45 minutes. So the rate of administration is variable. There are people who give fast, there are people who give very slow. Uh, if you give... Uh, Either way, if the patient has got a reaction, you yeah. have to stop for a while and but restart. Restart now. So basically, one thinking is to give adrenaline <laughs> before you start the infusion and slowly start and then gradually increase the speed and complete at the earliest. Suppose the patient comes late to your hospital, will you give it? Is a time uh, frame still the patient must come? It is said to be given best uh, and the patient comes in immediately, okay. but delayed also you can give. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. 
all the preparations are not given IV. There are two types. One is a powder form, which is uh, you mix it up with the digital water and then inject intramuscularly. Mm. It acts less faster. It is used only if the other variety is not available. Okay, sir. So there is something called low dose technique and there is something called a high dose technique. There is something called fast technique and slow technique. There are variable opinions and uh, what side effect of this antivenin treatment. Immediate side effect is allergic reaction, allergic anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis. Reaction. So preferred alicity you can give because there is no other alternative drugs to be given. Okay, so when do you give antivenin for all patients or who are comes when and say I was bitten by a snake, will you give or what is the No, policy? when there is a signs of envenomation or uh, we already mentioned, time, yes. Or clotting time is increased. Yes. Don't or when there is a CNS problem, hematological problem, shock. So mm -hmm. systemic or local reaction. Mm -hmm. So what's the consistency of this? Uh, Polyvalent, uh, it contains four species is one is cobra, threat, then russell swiper and uh, mm, soft scale type. So minimum poison if somebody is in, being injected by a snake will be 5 milligram. Okay sir. So to circumvent it you have to give appropriate amount of antivenin and then you have to repeat the dose depending upon the response of the patient. Okay. So you mentioned that this can be pituitary. Mm -hmm. no? Yes, sir. So, what are the cause of hypopituitarism? Mm, hypopituitarism, one is congenital, then acquired causes can be tumor, uh, trauma, then post Sheehan syndrome, uh, any any other cause for thrombosis, pituitary apoplexy, then this one snake bite. Mm. So post surgical, post surgical. Post surgical apoplexy, okay. yes. Apoplexy. It can be Sheehan syndrome. Stroke. Infiltration. Oh, Autoimmune hypophysitis. Hmm. Trauma directly or through surgery. Mass effect with the tumor. And sometimes people undergo radiation also. Maybe the candidates for hypopituitarism. Okay. Rarely though, we get infections like TB, histoplasma. Other system diseases like sarcoid, they can have involvement of pituitary. Okay. Rare things. So, how do you diagnose it? Mm. Clinical, clinically well, present clinically with usually suspect. present with uh, usually present with uh, um, uh, tiredness, fatigability, and females will be presented with. Uh, Classical history of the last childbirth following that not fed the baby properly. The absence of lactation. Absence of lactation in the, for the last childbirth. That will be Very there for females. Then, then usually presented with hyponatremia related uh, symptoms or hypotension related. Orthostatic hypotension or uh, slowness of activity. Uh, it, they can present with hyponatremia or hy postural hypotension related symptoms. Those are the common presentations in elderly. In the stage so, order. common features are, as you said, absence of lactation mm -hmm. and also absence of menstruation after childbirth. After child, uh, Commonly, we expect a childbirth after three months. Mm -hmm. So, if it does not come forth, then you have to think. You said apoplexy is a cause. How do you recognize apoplexy? Apoplexy means bleeding. Bleeding into the... Uh, to uh, that is eh. <laughs> headache, diplopia, all those things. Commonly, hemorrhage secondary to mm. adenoma. Adenoma, okay. Sir. And acute headache, mm. nausea, vomiting, and when you examine hypoglycemia and hypotension. Okay, sir. This is a usual. Problem the casualty, somebody comes with a headache vomiting, oh. and you find BP is low and the RBC is low. Think about pituitary, upper okay. legs, Sheehan syndrome, Sheehan you already mentioned, failure of lactation and secondary amenorrhea. 
she had syndrome causes post pregnancy post partum ready for help post partum help uh, eclampsia ah uh, uh, then uh, sir what are the components of help syndrome uh, uh, hemolysis elevated liver enzymes low platelet so infiltration is another cause you mentioned mm -hmm. hemochromatosis sarcoid tb histoplasma, histoplasma. what is empty cell syndrome uh, uh, that is uh, an accidental detection of uh, uh, while imaging we will see like uh, lateral images shows uh, thinned out uh, uh, pituitary with uh, M that uh, cell atrasica will be empty and uh, it's a incidental radiological incidental finding, finding when you finding. Uh. okay hmm? mm. okay and it does not require any treatment per se treatment. Uh. they may come with headache and you may take it a so hypopituitarism is manifesting as amenorrhea infertility <coughs> decreased hair decreased libido rectal dysfunction, dysfunction and atrophic gonads so the patient under discussion had uh, features suggestive of atrophic gonads okay. rectal dysfunction decreased hair so that's very uh, classical presentation hmm. so how do you diagnose and how to investigate this patient um, diagnosis uh, uh, we have to look for both a thyroid adrenal thyroid function test cortisol level then uh, lhfsh levels so we then, have direct assay for yes, lhfsh, LHFSH. Growth direct for growth hormone and growth hormone can be stimulated by administration of mm. insulin, insulin. insulin in the fasting state mm. and the response if it is less than 10 then it is a test for hypopituitarism. Mm. It's a test because you are going to give insulin in the fasting state and patient may go for profound hypoglycemia do not if the evidence is otherwise. Yet that commonly will not show much the right, unlike in other types of hypothyroidism. <laughs> if you get tested with CD, so you ACTH go for test. cortisol. Cortisol, ACTH and stimulation test. Sometimes MRI may help you to tell whether it's a tumor or there's a bleed and that may be helpful so what are the clinical sequences by which hypopituitarism manifest uh, the hypogonadism first hypothyroidism so life-saving life -saving hormone will be preserved till the end and uh, so this will be the pattern the last is ACTH yes, so it is life saving mm. okay so okay. efficiency of these first two will produce amenorrhea fertility and so on mm. good hormone may be silent but it produces what's called like muscle wasting lethargy lack of drive okay sir Okay. Yes, Deepak. Sir. When we talk, we should not talk together. When you talk, I must keep quiet, and when I talk, you must keep quiet. Otherwise, the recording it doesn't become okay. Okay. And uh, ACTH deficiency produces fatigue, decreased appetite. Why the pigmentation problem? You said pallor. Tell about that. 
the pigmentation problem is uh, because of the melanotropin stimulating hormone is also reduced same with the same cells from ACTH secreting. So the melanin will be reduced. So that produces panel. Okay. ACTH deficiency also produces low blood pressure. So alabaster skin is pale dry, not possible tanning because of deficiency of MSH loss of hair as you already said so what is normal size of the testes 3.4 centimeters long length to ICS volume bottom 25 13, 25, okay. 13. so how do you measure it uh, that is orchidometer we have to compare with the size different sized pearl shape that this will be there with the archidometer we have to compare with the size that's good and then then we have to show. and uh, why do you get uh, hypotension uh, because of the hypo hypo cortisol okay did you get uh, cranial nerve involvement in hypopituitarism Hyper, uh, in generalized, generalized hyper. Ah, uh, it's a adenoma, macro adenoma producing. Then we can have uh, visual disturbances. Pressure effect. Uh, pressure effect or any raised, raised ICT, sixth nerve involvement. That kind so of what is What is Foster Kennedy syndrome? Foster Kennedy syndrome is the, is occurs when there is a meningioma involving the optic nerve sheath so that produces the compression of the nerve produces that side uh, optic atrophy but because of the tumor there will be raised ICT that will be manifested as papilledema in the other eye so papilledema one eye with the with the optic, optic atrophy in the other eye in the uh, other eye it need not be always a meningioma it could okay. be anything Okay. Anything is possible with the foster candy. So today's case, first case we are discussing today is uh, hypopituitarism, presenting as tiredness, weakness, erectile dysfunction, and it all occurred because of a snake bite that occurred ten years before. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, sir. No. So he said there is no gynecomastia. Okay. So why there is no gynecomastia? Um, because there is no high priest. So that is a feature of primary. Primary. Okay. Sir. Primary there is no gynecomastia. Secondary there will be excess amount of hormones coming from the pituitary. Oh. Primary okay. is more common, secondary is less common, mm -hmm. and testis is soft in primary and uh, secondary will be firm. Okay. So, how do you treat this patient? Mm, treatment, uh, first we need a steroid replacement. Yes. Then, uh, then followed by thyroid hormone. Good. And then uh, the GHA, FSH analogy, like that. Can uh, be FSH given. Analogy can be given. So, can be given. Okay. And if there is persistent hypotension? Persistent, uh, sir, steroids. steroids is the treatment for hypotension. Okay, that's good. Steroid is a treatment. Mm How -hmm. long you will continue? Um, this patient requires lifelong replacement. Lifelong treatment. And prognosis? Prognosis with the replacement is a good prognosis. Good prognosis. Yes, so if you have no doubt, we will close it and move to the next case. Okay.